All right, hey everyone. I've just whipped up this walkthrough tutorial. It's actually my first video working out the um, ins and outs of Zoom so that I can share with you my screen. So what I want to take you guys through today is interacting with the Binance Smart Chain protocol with a ledger. So that's probably the safest way you could possibly hold your assets and be able to interact with a smart contract protocol at the same time. So I want to take you back to the beginning. So I'm just going to take you through the withdrawal page. So what you want to do here is you want to select which transfer network you're going to send it to. Now, if you were to send it to BEP2, BEP2, that would appear in your Ethereum wallet, your standard Ethereum mainnet. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to select Binance Smart Chain. It'll come up with this warning. You understand um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've already gone ahead and done a little withdrawal, uh, save going through the two factor authentication steps. So you'll see here that I've got MetaMask. In order to send it to the right place, I would have copied to my clipboard and pasted it there. So we want to hit this little colorful icon up in the top right of the screen. What's that, what that's going to do? It's going to drop this box down. And the part that you guys will be most interested in is connect hardware wallet. So it is worth pointing out that despite the fact I'm on BSC mainnet, I'm actually operating with the Ethereum app on the ledger. Now, there is a very important step within that as well. So you pick up your ledgers, you scroll through, select Ethereum app, application is ready. Go one to the right, two to the right, you've got settings. And then from there, you wanna go contract data It'll probably say not allowed when you're going through that. You want to select allowed because we're going to interact with some smart contract protocols. And now they're very basic. It's also worth noting that pretty much the same steps I'm showing you here can be applied to the Ethereum mainnet to interact with their DeFi protocols. Um, in my personal view, you would be mad unless you've got tens of thousands of dollars that you're happy to experiment with because that's what this is, a big experiment. Uh, to pay in gas fees because the gas fees are just disgusting, like absolutely filthy. Uh, so you can see I've already gone ahead and I've connected my ledger. You can also see that I've been playing with a little amount here. So I've gone ahead and I've gotten, now while that says Ethereum, that is actually BNB. How you can verify that? You can actually go ahead and click these little dots, view an explorer, you'll see the contents of your wallet. You can see any wallet this way it's a public explorer so you click your little drop down box you can see that i bought inj for this demonstration and that i have 96 dollars of bnb again for the purposes of this demonstration so i'm actually going to go ahead and show you now how to set up the main net very quickly so you would go back to metamask and in our instance we've already gone ahead and set it up but for your purposes, you would drop this drop box here, go to custom RPC. And now you've got a variety of different fields you need to fill in. You can go ahead and find that on Binance in their blog. You can see, so you can copy and paste all those. Chain ID. Now you'll see that I won't actually be able to set it up because it already recognizes that I'm operating off the main net. URL is already present in existing list of networks. So the optional fields are just that. You don't really need to put anything in there. After that, you can go ahead and save. Once you've saved that, you should have the BSC main net. So we'll click that off and you'll see now I've got my ledger enabled MetaMask open. opened. So for the instances, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use PancakeSwap and FryWorld. Those are two BSE protocols. 
uh, pancake, pancake swap is extremely popular in the BSC world. So let's start there. So I'm going to go ahead and that's from a previous test just to make sure everything is running smoothly. Um, so our goal here is to provide liquidity to the liquidity pool. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to swap. So you can see I'm on the liquidity tab. I'm going to go exchange. I'm going to enter in one. It's going to calculate the value of that in I and J. So boom, 5.13. I'm going to go ahead and swap that. Confirm. Now it's going to ask for a confirmation on the MetaMask notification here. We're going to confirm that. And now you can see that it's asking for us to also confirm on our, meta, on our ledgers. So touch your security key. So right now I'm looking at my ledger. It's saying review transaction, go right, data present, go right. It's telling you the amount, right, the address, the maximum fees, which is very cheap compared to Ethereum. Accept and send. I've approved that now. So we wait for just a few brief moments as it is an incredibly efficient network. The Binance Smart Chain, we're going to close that. Wait for a few moments. We should get confirmation. There we go. There it is. So we're going to go over to liquidity. And this will be the fun part. So we're going to add liquidity. Now we're going to select our tokens. So I won't go into an explanation of things like impermanent loss. Uh, that is definitely for another video. It may <laughs> involve some PowerPoints. Uh, there is a lot of information out there. I will tell you though, it takes some time to wrap your head around. The concept's not simple because you've got two moving parts. As you can see, liquidity on a decentralized platform. And this is also common in the Ethereum mainnet DeFi protocols as well, is that it basically wants a 50-50 split. It wants a 50-50 split. So if I went max with all the I and J I have, you would see that I don't have enough BNB. So because I don't want to exhaust my BNB and I want to have gas fees, uh, rather enough BNB to pay for gas, I'm going to um, add liquidity. It's going to add a pair of from one BNB. It's going to put, match it with 5.14287 I and J injective protocol. I'm going to go ahead and hit supply. So you can see from this that I will receive 2.16 liquidity pair tokens. Now, again, this is the same concept as providing liquidity on Ethereum. They will give you a derivative of what you have staked in liquidity. So we're going to confirm the supply. It's going to come up again. We're going to go ahead and confirm that. Okay, so I'm going to have to interact with my ledger again. So go through the prompts and then you want to accept and send, which you probably can't really see there. Press both the buttons at the same time. Now that's gone ahead and been submitted. So we're going to wait until that has completed. There we go. So now I want to show you what you get for having done that. So you're going back to your address. We're going to refresh this now because we have changed the contents of the wallet. And don't be alarmed by the fact that the value has gone down. As you can see, we have 2.16 cake, the exchange we got it from, LP liquidity pair. So now what's really cool and important to understand as well is that this is simply a derivative, but there are things that you can go ahead and do with this derivative. So PancakeSwap have a partnership with Fryworld. Basically what I'm briefly showing you here. So this is their Cake LP V2. We're already in there as you can see. So you can, as you can see, there's various APYs for each of these pairs. Now there are a lot of factors that go into determining the APA right, uh, rather the APY rate. 
uh, it's not fixed. Um, it fluctuates with the value of both the assets. If one goes down, one goes up, both go up, both go down. That's when you also got to wrap your head around the concept of impermanent loss, which as I said, it's uh, beyond the purview of this particular demonstration. But you can see here, INJ, BNB, LP. We're going to drop that. You'll see that it recognizes the, the derivative liquidity pair in my wallet, INJ, BNB. So we're going to go ahead and approve that, which again is common in on DeFi protocols. You'd have to pay the same thing as well for Ethereum. $1.74, that would probably cost nearly eight or $10 on Ethereum. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. It's going to ask for me to interact with my ledger again, I'm interacting with it. Do, 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 do. Accept and send. So now we're just gonna hang out and wait for that to be confirmed and that should not take too long. Cool, awesome. So now that's been confirmed, we're waiting for this button to change, hello. So I wanna go ahead and deposit all. I'm gonna go do that. Now we're going to confirm that as well. That will require us interacting yet again with the ledger. It is very intensive, the amount of interactions that take place with the ledger. But as far as protecting your assets and using them through a MetaMask protocol, it is probably the safest way of doing it. So that's been confirmed. So now you'll see that I have 2.16 LP tokens. This particular protocol, it's important to recognize because I'm not shilling this as much as I enjoy it. And I have other MetaMask accounts uh, where I keep a, like many of my holdings. So Uni BNB is a favorite, TWT BNB is a favorite, um, BTCB, which is just simply Binance chained wrapped Bitcoin with BNB. Uh, I've got a few other ones that I dabble with as well on here. Um, those lock in there. So you can see that if I was to withdraw it right now, I would only get 1.77. This particular protocol will punish you if you try to withdraw it too early. So you leave that here and over time, your total LP tokens will grow. So right now it's, you can't really tell by looking at that, uh, but that will go up at a compound interest rate of 106% over the course of a year. So obviously the harder you go on that, the more of a return you would get. And with this particular automated market making um, aggregator, your total LP tokens will actually increase, which is really, really cool. So that's it guys. So now we've got that. We can go ahead and have a quick look in here to refresh once more. So what's really cool is that we now have a derivative on top of a derivative. So we now have fry cake liquidity pair. So there are a variety of things that you can do with this. Um, we can explore right now. It may not actually be available on this, but you can go ahead and stake the derivative of the derivative, which is really cool. Um, da, 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 da. So you can see that it's actually not available for that particular derivative, but had I gone ahead and put cake and BNB in there, I would get an APY return of fries. So you'll also see if we go back here, once this loads up, that my total APY, had I put it in uni BNB, it does not apply to INJ BNB at this stage, unfortunately but on another wallet, I have it on uni BNB. So that's where I would have single staked my derivative of my derivative, my fry cake liquidity pair. I would have received 51% APY of the native token for this platform fries. So that's just one example of what you can do with uh, DeFi protocols. So take pretty much what I've just shown you here and you can go ahead and do that on the Ethereum mainnet if you're game enough to deal with those gas fees. Cause they, like I say, they're just, no, I wouldn't do it out of principle. <laughs> That's just me though. 
um, but each to their own. Okay, guys, so I, I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you can, of course, reach out to me about any of this. I'm always happy to help. And I hope you guys all have a great week. Awesome. Thanks for watching.